Well, hello everybody, and uh, thank you for watching this video. We are going to be looking in depth about uh, data and getting onto how we analyze data with an expert in the field, a friend of mine that I've known for a few years now, Jamie Allen. Morning, Jamie. Good morning, Joe. Thank you very much for inviting me. Lovely to be here. It's great to have you. So we're going to start looking at a little bit about um, data, um, but why should we start there? Why is, is data the kind of first point in the chain? Well, the data is actually the key element of any business. Um, like, like any business needs customers, the data is effectively what the customers do with the business. So that's the starting point. When you first have your meeting, when you first make that call, you log it, you write it down, you do something with it. That's data, information about people. And that's where it all starts. So gathering data and gathering the right data is uh, absolutely vital to a business and getting that data uh, in, in some sort of format of, of um, control is even more uh, important. Sure, yeah. Um, and speaking of controlling data, I guess we're all quite aware of regulations around uh, how data is stored and how, how data is used. I mean, what do you see as the kind of pitfalls, the risks there, if we don't take it, uh, approach it correctly? Well, yes. Uh, as you can imagine, companies these days have a mass of data. They often don't know where it is, um, they, and they suddenly to get a, get a knee-jerk reaction thinking my goodness me we haven't spoken to them for a while let's do something but of course with GDPR coming in in 2018 uh, there was a massive kick up the backside to a lot of businesses especially the large ones to get their data um, sorted and cleaned and, and whilst they did make a, 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 an effort to, to, to do this it, it was even more vital for the SMEs for the smaller businesses to do it because they had stuff literally all over the place in spreadsheets in in various um, databases on laptops in, in notebooks all, all over the place and they suddenly thought oh I know let, let, let's talk to these people again but of course you can't do that you, you've now got to have a structured approach under the GDPR uh, regime the, the controls to actually make sure that you are um, managing that data appropriately because you if you don't um, you, you can be uh, you, you can be fined for um, even for misinterpreting it, like all these things, um, yeah. uh, if you if you don't know what you're doing, it's it's not an excuse. So does it have to be centralised? Then is that what you're saying? That you're you're looking the first step is to bring the data sort of together to one reference point. Yeah, ideally, is to get the data first of all found, cleaned, analysed, and then centralised in a, in a what I call a a customer uh, a customer relationship um, management system which we all know is a CRM, mm -hmm. um, because once it's all centralized, you can then manage those relationships with those customers. And also during that process, you can get that, that data cleaned, which is all part of the GDPR process to get the opt-ins. I guess sometimes it must be difficult for businesses to know really what data they need when they start out. Um, because there's so much you can collect. You think we've, we've got Google Analytics where you can have figures coming out of your ears. We've got interactions online, people filling in forms on our websites. And often when you fill in a form, you think, do they really need to know that? I suppose, how, how might a business identify what data it actually does need and should be trying to collect? Well, actually, that, that, that's, that's a really good question because that, that's the proper starting point in any business. It's to, it, it's to understand what do they want out of, the information that they've got. So uh, essentially, um, they need to establish the, um, the strategy for data gathering. You know, they're going to gather data. What do they want the data to tell them? What does it focus on to help the business move forward? So it moves towards a strategy. Um, and then, and essentially, you then collect that data. Um, so you need to then find out where you need to go to, to get the relevant data to make those business decisions to help that strategy move forward. Um, then you, you go through the process of cleaning and analysis and, and interpretation and you know, visualization. So you've got everything in place to actually understand why you want that data in the first place and how it's gonna work for the business. Absolutely vital. Mm -hmm. Could you describe a little bit what you mean about cleaning data? Data cleaning, data cleansing, um, a, lo a lot of data um, that, that resides in various silos or on, on laptops or even in CRMs often are not um, are not fully populated. There are 
occasionally du duplicates in there. There are blank fields in there. There is um, misinterpreted fields in there, like telephone numbers are wrong formats, or um, there could be um, uh, uh, um, numerical data in free format fields. And of course, it, it, that happens. That that's not that's not going to that's not going to actually tra transcribe into a uh, an import. So you, cleaning the data is making sure it's what's called normalized and right. verified, um, so that you have data that you can realistically use. So you know you've got the right person at the right location with the right number, the right business, uh, and like all these things, data uh, it's it's a movable feast. Um, every six months, data changes, which is why it's vital for businesses to keep on top of their customer data. Mm, yeah, I mean, um, sort of, as you know, we with Business Grandmaster explore the analogy of, of, of chess with business, they're bringing the two worlds together. And sometimes um, people, when they're starting out with, with learning chess, they, they don't necessarily um, analyze the whole they just look at the odd possible move and then get a bit bored and think oh i'll just get on with it do you think in in business there's sometimes a tendency to not spend enough time on analysis and looking at the data that's available uh, to yeah. us yeah absolutely you need the data to help you interpret how you're going to move forward the data is vital to build your strategy so if you if you think of your, your chess pieces as your the the, the data elements mm. so your king is an element, your queen is another, they all have different purposes, different um, uh, um, uh, um, values. So you need to understand how am I gonna make that data work to move forward in that, in that, that chess game, just like you'd, you'd start, look at your data to think, of the people that we've been selling this product to and service, how are we gonna actually encourage them to either sell, uh, buy more from us or, and, and strike up a better relationship with us? So each of those pieces on the chessboard has a value just as the customer data, each individual customer has value to the business. Yeah. And I, I think as well, we can, we can start with a kind of an idea sometimes in mind, and then we go to the data, collect the data, but perhaps is the data set then sometimes going to change our strategy? So you were saying about having an idea in, in, in the beginning of what we were aiming for, um, is there perhaps a danger that we try and cast that, da that data into an image that we already want it to be, that rather than allowing it to reinform and uh, our strategy going forwards? Well, yeah, um, some companies I'm, I'm sure do go ahead and think, no, that's what we want and that's what we're going to do without actually thinking, hold on a minute, our history tells us that what is actually happening is totally not so much the opposite, but different. And you, you, you should ideally listen to or um, not so much listen, but understand what historically has gone before, because that will help you decide the types of customers and the types of business and the types of services that historically you've done well in, that you can actually get um, uh, get a differential, get a, a better market uh, angle on, so you can actually create campaigns that make you different in the marketplace that only you can have. So use the data to help you understand more about your business so you can write strategies and create marketing campaigns that, that actually work and are targeted at the right people at the right time by, by actually profiling that, that, that database. Sure, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, chess matches, we often find that, that as we get higher up the, the, the rankings of better and better players, that they seem to be playing kind of set patterns to begin with where they're setting themselves up with the type of game they know how to play and they know how to play well. It's yes. sort of preparing yourself for your strengths. And that can only be done by looking back at what has worked in the past. Exactly. And, it, and this is where the analogy for ch with chess is brilliant because as you start out in chess, you think that's great. Um, oh good, I can move there, I can move there. I can take the king, brilliant, I've won. But as you get older and as you get wiser, you come up against other people that are better than you. And you think, my goodness, it's not as easy as I thought. So you think, hold on, how am I going to learn to actually be different and actually beat this guy or that 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 person uh, in the future and that, that's where you've got to rethink how you're going to move forward you've got to rethink your strategy it's exactly the same with data as you as you sell uh, uh, products and services historically markets change opportunities change you adapt to the marketplace but your data all the time will be helping you understand 
how that's happening. And that's why, you, you know, just like you learn in chess, you learn how to run your business and how to move your business forward mm. from the information of the, uh, that's coming out of the data um, uh, back into the business. Yeah, I, I suppose then we, we, the, the question then becomes um, more about prioritizing um, aspects of the data. When we're analyzing, analyzing a chess position, there are lots of things we might notice that are not going to impact the position as uh, as much as various others. Now, within within business, when we're collecting our our, our data um, that we're going to then take forwards and think about formulating a strategy around, um, how do we prioritize our data? Um, essentially, uh, you should do a, uh, what I call a customer profile and 80-20. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty percent of your uh, of your customers will deliver eighty percent of your business. Generally, it, it's not an exact science, but it's pretty damn close. Mm -hmm. um, and by doing that, you can then concentrate on that top 20 percent, because those are the people historically that have done the best business with you. In, in when I say the, the best business have done the most, the best, um, the majority, but th they're doing more with you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So those are the ones you need to concentrate on. And those are the businesses that will ideally be the profile of the companies that you should be targeting in the future because that type of business works well with your business. So that they're what, what I would call an ideal customer. The mm -hmm. other 80%, you need to try and get up the value chain. So you need to break that down. And I've, I, I work to a sort of a, a gold, silver, bronze and lead because lead <laughs> sinks to the bottom and that's the bottom 20%. So right. you, that 20%, that, that you really got to think, well, don't, don't sort of, Put them in a, in a in a pit, but put them in an archive, and and visit them once every six months or once every nine months. But don't concentrate on them, and then the the, the next section, the the next um, uh, area, which is the bronze area, the the, the if, if you like the the fifty percent of the sixty percent that's left. It it can get a bit complicated, but essentially you're working from the bronze to the silver to the gold. And you're concentrating on, on getting your team of people to talk and build those relationships with the best uh, customers. So that's mm -hmm. why we concentrate mm -hmm. on gold, but try and get the silvers to gold and the bronze to silver. That's a process of, of, of refining then, really. Yeah, and it's, it is um, a refinement because you don't want to be doing business with, with companies that don't really want to do much business with you. They're happy to maybe buy something from you once a year because that suits but it doesn't suit you you, mm. you want to be able to actually develop that relationship but which is fine so you you, you don't as i say put them in a pit you, you keep them on an archive you keep in touch but you don't concentrate your time on it yeah. so this is where i say that when you create a marketing campaign it comes from the data it comes from historically where you've been successful so you're talking to the right people at the right time mm. Certainly, I remember when I was starting out in chess, and I still do it to an extent, unfortunately, at times, is you get distracted by what looks like a nice, pretty idea. And uh, you spend an awful lot of time looking at something which, in the terms that you were speaking about there, is effectively is your 20, you know, your small, your lead customers, if you like, the ones that you shouldn't really be spending all your time on. And before you know it, a whole chunk of the game has flown by while you've just been sitting there, you know, oh, this is interesting, isn't it? Having a look at that. And it's it's irrelevant. You're losing out on the majority of it because you're not focusing in the right place. It's that's easily that's, done. And, and that's absolutely right, which again comes back to chess. Mm. You know, if you're not focusing on the right piece at the right time, you're not going to make the right move. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. I think interestingly as well from what you're, you're saying, I mean, no, I think people sometimes think of business and, and chess as well as being quite sort of linear. Well, you, you start... With, with your data perhaps and you process all the way through to to the end and it, it's just it's just a straight line but actually data and strategy is not just a straight line it's kind of cyclical really isn't it uh yes it, it also has bumps in the road occasionally as well uh, yes <laughs> yeah. it, it's yes it's um it, can you get a, 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 a circle with bumps in it I, I guess you can as long as it joins at the end of the day Absolutely. But it's not it's not an even it's not an even run um, because you've got to react to markets. And that's why you always need to be uh, engaging with your data every six months or so to make sure it's up to date. Certainly every 12 months, because there, there are always bumps in the road. There's always something coming out of the woodwork. You think, my goodness, what happened there? And it could be anything from 
from um, market pressures to legislation, mm. like GDPR, for instance. You think, my goodness me, we need to clean up our database. Where is our data? And then you go back and you know start again. Yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. critical. Yeah. Data is critical. You can't just sort of think, oh, well, I've done my data analysis. I've got my strategy in place. Never again shall I open that book. You know, precisely, <laughs> precisely. It, 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 I mean, how do you get to be a grandmaster? Because <laughs> you're constantly thinking, changing, uh, moving. You, you, you're adapting all the time. Learning from mistakes, refining, moving, moving forward that little bit. You know, you, you you kind of in a way you you need the losses. You need to see where you're going wrong to to refine your game to move yourself forward. And it's the same sort of thing with with business. It's all very well putting out a strategy, but it's not like it's a it's a holy document never to be touched again. It's 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 a working document, isn't it? It's something that needs to keep being informed by data that is refreshed. It it is exactly that, and it shouldn't be siloed either. Because whilst marketing have um, requirements above sales, have requirements above finance, have requirements above operations, they all have their own requirements, but they're all feeding off the same data. So they all have different interpretations of that data. So it's like having the right the, the team around you. So this is what builds a strategy. You get buy-in. When, when, you, when you, for instance, create a CRM, you get mm -hmm. buy-in to the people who are actually going to use it because... If they if they think it's it's not not actually fit to, to manage their workflow, they're not going to use it. So you have to actually understand what their workflow is. Mm. So similarly, the other departments need to understand the the, the whole uh, uh, data environment, so they can have buy into the strategy because they'll want something out of it that marketing will 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 not. Yeah, they'll have different different strategies. So. To get by, and it's all about the team. Again, coming back to chess, mm. there's a team behind the player. And mm. it's actually in business. That data drives the business, but everybody shares it. But everybody has different interpretations of what they want out of it. Mm. And it comes right back to your first question. What do you want to, this data to, to actually uh, deliver for the business? And that's where you get the buy-in. Yeah. Well, again, that right. completes yeah. the cycle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, that, that's been very helpful, uh, Jamie. Thank you very much for uh, coming on to this video for us today. Uh, really enjoyed having you on. This is uh, Jamie Allen, everybody. And um, I hope you'll be uh, looking to find out more about how you can use your data for your business more effectively uh, for planning and amending your strategies. That's great. Now, thank you very much again for the invitation.